Hello, Vital Art Sessions members. It's Kelly Folsom here, and I want to welcome you back to another Vital Art Session. I'm super excited about today's lesson. Look at the gorgeousness that is before us uh, with these beautiful, beautiful, deep, rich delphiniums. We've got two different colors of those, a lighter blue, a deeper blue couple of lovely uh, sunflowers popped in there to contrast with that. As you can see, we're doing a looking down still life, kind of this beautiful S-curve as well. Uh, I put one of the delphiniums upside down to create more of that S-curve. And as you can see, I've taken off the light blocker, um, taken off the light blocker, and we have our light a little bit more frontal. Since this color is gonna, uh, this painting is gonna be all about color and all about shapes. Um, so uh, I put this a little bit more in front just to light everything up um, a bit more. We're still gonna have a little bit of form shadow and cast shadow inside of here. Uh, and of course, onto the back wall. So super excited about this lesson today. Let's dive in and get started, shall we? I want you to know I've gone ahead and pre-mixed three different blues on my palette. I don't typically do this, but I wanted to do it in order to help you better. Um, so for our darker delphiniums, um, I've just mixed up a uh, ultramarine blue with white and that's all that's in that it's just a gorgeous rich blue um, and then this color here is going to show up more by way of my background color sort of a blue green it's basically this mixture with a little tiny touch of the cadmium lemon uh, lemon yellow and then this blue uh, for the lighter kind of um, well there's sort of a powder powder like blue it's really just this mixture blue and white with a lot more white and then also because there is a little touch of yellow there I added in uh, some Naples yellow light okay so you could go ahead and pause the video and get those three mixtures mixed up if you'd like to and next of course the big uh, big thing to really wrangle in here uh, is number one the size and placement and then number two the value structure because uh, this painting is all about color but every color has a value and so you really want to make sure that you get your value structure um, spot on but before we do that we need to size this down um, as I said we're going to be doing a looking down because that gives us a little bit better view of all these flowers and I also have like a beautiful sort of figure eight or s curve to the design here um, with these delphiniums here coming down and around and then that kind of angles back to this little blossom on the ground plane we've got some little yellow blossoms here so the first first things first is to kind of figure out you know where is that vase and let's say the two uh, sunflowers going to be because they are uh, kind of the star of the show against all of these um, delphiniums so you want to kind of get an idea for that probably should be using more burnt umber. This tone here is mostly burnt umber, even though this is kind of a lighter background. Um, there are quite a few darker shadows in between here and warmth in the shadows to help pop uh, the sunflowers and all of the cool lights. So I'm just, I'm actually gonna be looking at all of those values first. I've got two circles here, my top uh, sunflower let's say on this top left third so again pause your video go back tone your canvas do your thirds grid I go corner to corner to find that center um, that always will always really help you get your size and placement so I'm just going to use circles right now and you know this one I'm kind of circling this way this axis is facing this way this axis is facing this flower is facing up and is a little bit more foreshortened so kind of an oval facing up is what I'm going to be going for there all right now I don't want to get just a ton of this uh, brown down or the burnt umber down because it will affect some of the uh, 
the color of the delphiniums, but I do want to look for, you know, what, what is the overall shape of these going to be? They are going to go off the canvas. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have these coming down, let's say in front. So I'll just kind of clean up some of that umber and they really come out here in light. I'm not super concerned about the particular shape of this copper pot. I did think that little bit of burnt sienna or coppery color would really complement uh, against the blues as well. And then our cast shadows, because our light is in front, are moving back in space. So again, you want to look for all of these shadow shapes. Find some of your darkest darks first. I'm using ultramarine blue in that burnt umber. So like some of my darkest darks show up in here with the delphiniums that are in shadow underneath the uh, sunflowers. So it's really important that I get those darks in. Um, I can also get in the darks of the center of the sunflowers first, just with some burnt umber, maybe even just a little touch of burnt sienna. Get a little golden warmth going there. Think about the centers of these almost like a stop sign, you know, an octagon or hexagon is better than just a circle. And if you make them a little too big, that's okay. This one actually might be more of a, uh, what would that be, a pentagon because of the foreshortening. Um, this, this tends to flatten out this curve down here because it's, this is the curve that's closest to us. And then we see more of the angles of these curves. Um, this one, you know, does have that uh, cast shadow on the inside. So maybe a little alizarin and blue or, or some more burnt umber just to take, you know, that just a notch darker. Um, all right. And then just again, looking here, not getting too hung up on um, the exact shape of this copper pot, but maybe just getting some suggestion of that and pushing some of those darks a little bit darker as well. All right. Um, so, and then moving forward, I think I'm going to put some yellow ochre into this mixture for the cast shadow that's on the back wall, maybe even some blue, blue and yellow ochre. Um, and, you know, usually I add in a little touch of red or even like something like a Chinese orange or burnt sienna to give it a little glow. But there is a cast shadow back here that is darker than the yellow on the leaves. I'm just going to kind of scrub that in, but it's also lighter, let's say, than the value of the edge of the uh, copper pot, you know. So uh, if you're having a hard time seeing past color and seeing value, I recommend that you take a photo of your setup, turn it into black and white, have that reference there for yourself um, so that you can uh, know what value you need to go for, not just color. All right, so we've got cast shadow back here on the wall in between delphiniums. Okay, and then really no, there's just a tiny touch of cast shadow over here, but really no cast shadow on the left. We're not using a light blocker today. Um, I felt like all these shadows on the right were really going to anchor the painting enough. Um, so I did not use a cast shadow on the left. I'm going to go to this color for my background color. And I'm actually going to put a little more yellow ochre in there now that I'm looking at this a little more closely. Um, I don't want like that solid background blue green everywhere. So I might push this a little more yellowy green just for now, getting in enough of that painting around my subject batter. Using a, a bunch of medium here just to kind of get this layered in and you can paint, put it in kind of thin, but not super runny and wet, you know, so that you can put thicker paint on top. It's always a good idea. Some more Naples yellow. Um, this cast shadow over here is a little more distinct. But again, always doing your size and placement first, your shadow tones and getting, getting those darks in first then you can go to your lights and your color. 
Um, one thing I did not get in was the cast shadow on the tabletop plane where the delphiniums are hitting the tabletop plane. I'm just going to use some burnt umber right now. You know, your burnt umber might be a little darker than mine, you know, so if it is, add in some cad yellow light, uh, add in maybe something like a burnt sienna or cad red light or something to give it a little more glow. You know, the last thing you want to do is have, have everything feel like, feel like it's got, uh, you know, black shadows on it. All right, but this angle of the delphiniums here, and then, you know, this angle of cast shadow back to the pot is going to be really, really important. Well, I've got that red and sienna on there. I'm going to lighten it a bit with my green and just get a little flavor of that color that's going to be just suggested up in here. It's, it's not going to play a big role, but um, it is going to play, you know, a small role in the color harmony in the painting. All right, so now... Now that we've got, and you know, this stage is really all about setting the stage for your star of the show. So if everything um, is colorful, nothing is colorful, you know, so you have to uh, be sure to um, get all those neutrals set up so that then whenever you go to paint color, it really just sings. I mean, it just becomes so gorgeous. All right, so we're going to start with the delphinium. Uh, color and the power of suggestion here is the key and that's where um, getting in some of that brown stuff that tone underneath we're just going to kind of mass in scrub in some of this my the brush of my angle uh, the angle of my brush is still relatively flat but I do want to get some of this color in. Now, you're going to notice that some of these go more, more blue-violet. And in that case, after I get this first pass masked in, I can um, add in some alizarin crimson. But as you can see, picking up some of that umber is going to neutralize and darken some of those blues as well. And then I'll wipe my brush to get my brush clean again. Um, we've got this one over here. I think because my um, my vase has such a wide mouth that these kind of got a little spread apart like a V shape. Um, so I'm, I'm going to actually be looking to see how I can pull them a bit closer together, these delphiniums. Look how pretty that blue is. Just a pure color. You know, no, no added, added, you know, unnecessary added things to it. Really look at the contour on these and you can refine this contour a little bit more back again with your background color. Um, and then we're going to start to pull some of these out. But even this pure blue, it's going to appear darker. You know, we're going to paint it on top of this darker stuff that we already put down. And that's going to make that area dry a little bit darker as well. Look for what is the center line? What is the gesture of that foliage, of that, that you know, floral? Um, that way, you know, you really get that kind of dancing movement. They look like little butterfly wings just dancing all over the canvas. I'm not looking for any specific flower yet. I'm really going for the suggestion of the flower more than anything. Everything in nature starts to taper, get a little smaller as we get towards the end, bushier and fuller. I guess fuller might be the better. Whoops, that was a, quite a bit of alizarin. Now I'm looking for more of an alizarin, kind of blue-violet uh, for some of these that do go a little more blue-violet. and. If you add too much in there, remember that's going to darken the value too. So if you add too much, add a little bit of white. And then if you get too much alizarin like I did, add a little more blue back into it. But this is just going to be a touch more violet than the blue we have down. Um, so just ultramarine blue. Don't lose your way, you know, as you're working this, getting maybe very distracted by all of the information. 
keep moving forward, keep moving forward to um, basically that, the, keeping the whole thing in mind. So I think at this stage, it would be wise of me to go ahead and go into that lighter blue, fill those in, and then come back and see what kind of detail I need. Even if you remember, always focus front and center. So even if you just get a little bit of detail on a couple of, um, couple of blossoms in front, you know, that little bit of detail is gonna go a long, long way. So you can just look for you know, a, more of a flower that stands out more, that's more clear to your eye in the front, in the foreground. Maybe it's a little lighter. You've got to figure out why does that stand out a little bit more. So it could be a little bit lighter, it could be a little bit darker or have, you know, a sharper edge. Of course, then all on the right side, because our light is still on the left, it's just a little more frontal on the left, all on the right side. When you're painting flowers, you still wanna consider what angle is my light source at? So what, what side of that, this is like a cylinder, you know? So what side of that cylinder is in more shadow? So you're gonna go for kind of a deeper blue there. And again, squinting can really help here. Um, or referring back to your black and white image as well can really help here. Um, that, that umber and shadow that we had down is really gonna help these deeper blues sit back. And of course the alizarin also helps with shadow blues. So that they're not too blue to where they still look like light, you know? So you've got to add something kind of warm and translucent in there to make them look like shadow. Okay, going on to this blue over here, maybe I'll add in some of that blue green as well. And this is kind of the same value as the background. It's just a little more colorful than the background. And then of course we will have, you will see some variation in value. But again, go for the bigger, Bigger suggestion here, I think this might, I might have got it a little too light. Doing all of this first because it's all that blue and blue greens and this background might need to go a little more blue green. That's really gonna make the sunflowers pop. And again, don't worry right now about, you know, getting every blossom precise. I'm just looking for abstract shapes that are gonna suggest sort of that, that blossom-like feeling first. And then these are gonna go off the canvas. You don't want a lot of hard edges where you're going off the canvas, so be sure to keep all that soft, softer edge. Just kind of feathering in the paint, I suppose might be a good way to say that. Okay, and then we do have one of those down here on the tabletop plane. And again, this can be more, more alive, more sharp edged, more thick paint and, and you know maybe more painterly because it's down here in the foreground. All right, and just to get a little suggestion of these, lay these down flat. On the tabletop plane, those little yellow petals really are gonna add quite a lot to the uh, visual interest of this painting. Um, all right, let's go to sunflowers. We've already got the centers set up, so now all we need to do is add on the yellow petals. Now, <clears throat> you wanna consider um, is what, again, what is the light and shadow pattern? Um, these sunflowers are very much like a bowl. Okay, so, um, and there's layers to that bowl, right? With the overlap of the petals. So we wanna get kind of this deeper sort of orangey, red orangey stuff. This one is really facing, uh, really getting all this light, but let's say like this underplane. It's almost like copper color um, because there's petals on top that's casting shadow. Um, 
on the in-between of the layers. And so you're gonna see more of kind of a red glowy color there. Some of these uh, layers up here in between, you're also going to get that effect. Um, you know, so you again, in oil painting, you're always trying to paint dark to light. Start on the inside and pull out. And if you pick up some of that blue you can, and you don't want it, you could just wipe it off with your paper towel or use it. Um, sometimes I actually like that because, you know, we do see kind of some green tones in there, layered in there as well uh, for some of those shadow colors. But this is all shadow stuff. Uh, it's pretty much the same value as what's on the copper and very similar in color. This one over here, um, I'm, we're sanding on the shadow side of this. So with petals, leaves, what happens is it is in shadow, but you're, like, like a grape, you're getting so much glow. Make sure to keep this edge a little softer. You're getting so much glowy light. So colors like the cadmium, yellow deep, the Chinese orange, um, those glowy, fiery colors. And again, blend all of this together. Oops. Okay. And then this side of the bowl is like all lit up, you know. Um, so from about here over to here, about this half circle, um, is more in shadow and more because we're looking at it from the shadow side it's more glowy shadow all this glowy stuff reflected light glowy stuff in that kind of yellow orange or red orange family and then I would say just kind of this pure cad yellow deep with um, maybe just a little bit of Naples yellow or white. My white's pretty dirty, dirty right now. So I'm just gonna use Naples yellow um, just to start laying on. Look at that pop, laying on some light. Uh, now in this case, I would start the reverse, like on the outside and maybe pulling in for this. If you need a little cab lemon to get a little more intensity of the color, you can do that as well. But um, where I want the contour to be cleanest here is on the outside of it. And then, of course, we're gonna move a little bit, not quite as lit up because these are curling back and under, back and under. Okay, so you're gonna maybe add some of this glowy stuff just to drop the value into that color you already mixed. Not going quite to this full light here. And then what you're gonna notice is beyond that basic structure, you're gonna start seeing some petals that start to curl back and catch the light. So for example, like here we get a petal that kind of curls back and catches the light. Um, definitely a lot of these do as well. Curling back, catching the light. Edges, starting edges on these petals that catch the light. So this is where you take it beyond that just simple sort of that simple form, the structure of that simple form. All right. Um, and of course, some more can be done here. It's a lot easier to take this lighter in the shadow than it is to go darker once you have too much, you know, all the same color, all the same light on there so you can definitely build in some more light some more glow on top of that dark think about how those petals are really radiating around the center curving around the center uh, that also when you establish the difference in in the angle of these to the light source 
It also keeps you from, say, having all these petals, all these flowers that are just looking straight at you, you know, because that's kind of our natural tendency is that we tend to start to make everything just look, look like it's facing us frontally. Popping a little more light here, building a little more texture with the Naples and the lemon yellow. A little bit cooler there. Okay, and then uh, moving on to this one over here, let's go back to that uh, Cad Yellow Deep in the mixture. Now, these are bending back, so you have to get it into your nervous system that these are bending back. And so the parts that are bent backwards are actually getting a little more light than say this part down here. So this can go a little warmer, maybe again kind of pick up maybe some of that green or reddish orange tones because anything that gets a little less light here is going to be a little bit darker. I like to kind of keep this edge here softer in the beginning. And then when I really see, okay, that tip of that petal is getting hit more dynamically with light, more strong, strong with light, then I'll go in sort of for the kill for full light. You want to get movement. I feel like movement, you know, is so important with flowers, trees, you know, things that are able to move. That's part of what really gives them like this lifelike quality. Um, all, all this kind of stuff. If a good breeze blew by, um, it's too light, but if a good breeze blew by, uh, you know, the leaves would move, the blossoms would move. Um, so getting that sense of movement, I feel like is so important. There's like a little blue green on the center here. That's just going to help kind of tie some color together. Um, going back, if you get something like that and you, you feel like you got it too big, you can come back with your dark and kind of carve it, carve it back down. Um, also in the background using, you know, your background shadow color or background color, you can carve in for uh, some more specific contours, you know, um, on those sunflowers, you know, more specific separations. So again, the contour uh, tells so much about the flower. Um, so after you get that kind of first layer of color in, come back with what's behind it, whether that's the copper pot or, um, or the background color, and just, you know, make sure that you get those contours a little more specific. Um, another thing that's going to be really helpful here is getting kind of the blue green of some of the stems that peekaboo through. Stems are critical. Uh, for us knowing, um, I love that this one's so curvy, for us knowing, you know, that there's something there to support um, all of the flowers. But again, really be, very, use a lot of restraint in, in which ones you put in. S again, squinting can really help you just by going back to the start of the show, looking at the sunflowers and seeing which stems really do show up a bit more. I never start one coming out of a flower. So, um, you know, and you don't have to put every single one in. We just need a few, you know, to, to get the gist of the thing. And of course, if you can make any of them, uh, you know, indicate, you know, like this kind of idea for me was kind of this S curve feeling so if I can make any of them indicate that, then that's helpful to my composition. 
All right, now we do need some finishing touches here. I should say when you're working on complicated stuff, you know, be sure to take breaks. It's taken me a long time to get to this point where I can paint more straight through and get more attention to detail in a short amount of time. But your energy wears down and you need to replenish it. Um, so sometimes just going to something different like the stems, you know, can just replenish that energy. All right. Another thing that's really, in my opinion, very critical is if any of these leaves, especially in the ones that are foreshortened leaves, petals are kind of kicking up and overlapping in front of the center. Oh my goodness. That's going to give you so much depth in your painting so fast. Um, so any of those that you can suggest in there uh, that are getting light and kind of bouncing up over the edge can really be helpful. You know, and make paint boldly. You can always take it off. You can always paint over it. But try to really discern, you know, what what's the angle of that particular petal. Um, you know, sometimes I've even seen artists kind of make those strokes before they actually put the paint down to kind of train themselves. But you just want to be decisive. You want to make bold strokes um, because that's how you learn to paint. Um, if you're always being timid and second guessing, you know, uh, you're, you're just never going to learn how to paint, in my opinion. So um, you also learn how to correct mistakes when you put something down bold and maybe maybe it was like, oh, that wasn't the right value or the right color, but maybe something was really great about it. Maybe it was the right shape. Maybe, maybe it really had movement, you know, um, and that's really what you want to be focusing on, not just thinking about what is the finished product, you know, how right am I? I think right, being right or wrong is like the enemy of living, I think is, has been a big learning lesson for me this year, for sure. Um, so if you're just focused on being right or wrong or good or bad, you know, that kind of black and white thinking, um, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to miss out on so many wonderful possibilities uh, for learning, you know, and actually growing. And there's a couple little petals kind of curving over the, the front of that. All right, everybody, I hope that this has been helpful to you. Um, it was surely a heck of a lot of fun for me. So thank you so much to everybody who requested the delphiniums and the sunflowers. Um, it's, it's just been a pleasure to paint them and I wish you happy painting. Bye.